Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I got Annie Hall, my anaconda here. And you know, it's it's so funny because this snake right now will only eat birds. So I feed it chicks. It gets a, it gets one chick per week. It's probably a couple months old now. This thing is growing. These chicks are like they 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 seem like they get no nutritional value whatsoever. They're like air basically in feathers. And this snake, which is what eat, it eats birds in the wild pretty much, is, look at him. Look how much she's grown. You guys have seen her when I first got her. She has put on a lot of size from, and I'm not feeding her two chicks or three chicks. I mean, if you know one chick per week, that's it. She gets one per week and she is putting on size. She looks healthy. She's getting girthy. It, it, it's amazing. These snakes are just meant to be big snakes. They will grow. You don't, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm learning something here because you don't really have to overfeed snakes that are going to get big. Just feed them, you know. I do the same thing with my berms. I do not overfeed them. I see people giving, and there's nothing wrong with this. I see people giving huge rabbits, two, three rabbits, you know. I give mine extra, extra large rats, and once in a while, maybe once a month, it'll get a small rabbit, you know, if I, if I come across one. But not always. A lot of times, I just give them jumbo rats. And you know what? They breed well. They're not oversized. They're not fat. And, you know, sometimes a lot of these snakes, they get overfed because it's exciting to watch them eat these big, huge prey items. They get overweight, and then they, you know, they get sluggish. A lot of times, especially with the berms, they'll get respiratory tract infections, or they'll just die out, you know. So the moral of the story is a big snake will grow big. Just give it a little more time. That's all. In nature, they don't overeat, right? They eat when they uh, have the prey available. <laughs> it's not usually uh, on a weekly basis, as they say. So let's check out the snake room, see what's going on here. Tonight, it is Monday night, so hopefully we will maybe catch uh, some eggs, some something being born. If not, I'll just show you some cool stuff. Let's go. Animal plastics have arrived, and no, they didn't come like this. They came, as I showed you the other day, like that. So I've been building cages with my mother-in-law, Denise. Uh, we put together four cages, four of the six, some of the cages that I bought have shelves in them. I bought a few of them with the shelves. And you can see this is no shelf, this is shelf. I'll, I'll do a, a more in-depth uh, video on this in the coming days. Uh, the shelf is great for the carpet pythons. The carpet pythons love to hang out on the shelf. They love to be a little higher up than everyone else. They like to look down on their prey. So that was cool. Um, one of the glass doors was broken. It came broken, I don't know, UPS. You know that, how that works. Other than that, everything looks really good. Uh, once I get the other two built, I'll put the glass doors on, I'll put the heat tape on the bottom, I'll stack them. I haven't decided where I'm gonna put them yet. I gotta find a spot for them because we're, we're, we're getting pretty crowded in here. So that's exciting. But what's more exciting is a clutch of ball pythons that I got today. So well, let's go take a look at those because I kind of just like peeked in here and uh, I went all the way down to the bottom cage and I said, nah, this girl will never, she's never going to, she's never going to lay this year. She's never going to have anything. And to my surprise, she's sitting on a clutch of eggs. And yes, that is a tri-stripe. That is a tri-stripe possible head albino that I bred to my male Superman, I like to call him, my banana and she orange dream. Yellow belly pied head hypo pos het albino. So I was trying to see if we can prove out that pos het albino. They're both pos het albino. So if they both are albino, there's only a one in four chance that we're going to get an albino. So I don't know if this is a really good experiment to try to prove them out, but um, we'll see. If we get an albino, then we know they both had albino. So that would be really kind of cool. But the idea is to get a bunch of genes into this. Um, tri-stripe project. Obviously, we're not going to produce anything visual from this pairing, but we'll have everything will be head tri-stripe, and hopefully we'll get some really cool stuff. Let's see what she's uh, got under there. All right, here's one of the problems with this clutch. First of all, this, this girl's a little skittish, so she's not going to come out too easily. I'm looking, and I'm seeing probably about four good eggs, one slug, so it's a small clutch. She was a small female. I didn't even know if she would produce this year, so I'm happy that we have anything, to be honest with you. Probably it's gonna be a hard clutch to prove out if it's head albino, like I mentioned earlier. 
but we'll we'll try our best. Now, we gotta use the paper towel trick on her because most of these females I just pull out, they don't wanna fight. She looks like she, yeah, she's in a fighting mood, this, this, this female. Um, she's done, because I saw her this earlier today and she, uh, she was late, so she's not happy. I'm gonna take her and wash her off. I have a tub right above her set up, nice and clean. We'll pull these eggs. There's four, like I said, it looks like there's four good eggs. We'll candle those. We'll see if they're, uh, if they got veins in them. This one is definitely no good, that's a slug, but there's four good eggs in here, so. I guess one in four chance that we prove out if, if you know, if she is had albino and the male is had albino, then it's, it's a good chance. Now, here's the rub. The rub is that, <laughs> I there's the rub, as Shakespeare would say. The rub is that I actually bred her to an albino pie earlier in the year. After deciding that wasn't what I wanted to do, I actually switched and then I put the other male in. I talked about the orange dream um, banana and she yellow belly pied male. And so I don't really know who the dad is. So there's a possibility that it could be the albino pied. So if we don't get anything like orange dream banana, you know, all those other things, then, then, then it's pretty much guaranteed that it's the albino pie, in which case we would basically have, you know, possible albino, you know, and uh, double head tri-stripe pie. So it'll be easy to determine if who the father is, but there is a chance that it, it could be one or, or two different snakes. So you always have to write that down because then when the eggs hatch, you're not, like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> it's happened to plenty of us out there, so you have to write these possibilities down. But once again, I was breeding them last year more to the albino pie. This year really was mostly to the banana anchi orange dream yellow belly pie. All right, let's get her washed off. All right, so here we go. I got my saran wrap right here. Pull off a nice sheet. The eggs are all in the egg box. They were oriented pretty well. I only changed one, I think. We're gonna put these, these eggs, hopefully in the middle here. Nice and lined up. This is a pretty big box for these eggs. I probably should put them in a smaller box because I'm gonna run out of big ones, but for now we'll put these in here. That's okay. This is, an, this is an important clutch. When you have an important clutch, you put it in a big box. You don't wanna take a chance, small box. Put the, the lid on, you pop your little stuff here, and you're done. I mean, I'm gonna put a tag on here, what's in here, when it was born, when I expect them to hatch, and I put them in the incubator, that's it. All right, here, yeah, I got the, uh, the animal plastics cage, my four foot cage here. It's packed really well, open it up carefully with my, my knife. First thing I want to take out is I want to take out the glass panes because they're very fragile. Matter of fact, I, I had two of these break in transit. I don't know if FedEx mishandled it, but these glass panes, you know, are very, very fragile. So we put them aside. We're, gonna use, we're not going to use them right away. We're going to use them last. That's the last thing we put on. We don't have to worry about that. Also, here's our heat tape that's going to go on the bottom of the, of the cage. We don't need this right now. We'll put this on the side. We want to work on building the cage. Now, when I first got, I don't like to build anything. It's not that I can't do it. I'm, I said this before. I'm just lazy, and, I, and it's not really that I'm lazy. I, I don't still have a lot of time. I'm, I'm a busy guy. I got a million things. I got three young kids. So, to me, I it's actually therapeutic to build these, but I just don't have the time to do it. So, uh, my mother-in-law helped me with the last couple. Um, I'm going to do this myself. Just because I want to get these done. I don't want to wait till next weekend to do it. I'd rather get it done now. So I'll show you guys what the process is. Hopefully it won't be too long. Here's your screws that come here. Luckily, the smartest thing these guys did was at Animal Plastics was the same screw is used throughout. You don't have to go through a million screws and they put extras in here. So there's not different size screws. Every screw is exactly the same and they give you lots of extras so that if you lose some, you break it, whatever the case may be, you're not going scrounging looking for something. Very smart. Here's, the directions are pretty good. I'd like to see some diagrams possibly, but they're written out very well and even I can understand them. So basically what we have here is we have the two sides 
of the cage right here. Left, and the good thing is they put stickers on them. And the stickers basically say left side, top cage, so they, you know which direction and orientation they need to be assembled in. And then of course, we have These are the top and the bottom of the cage right here. So we'll separate these. This is the front of the cage where, and you see it says here right here, front piece, top cage. So this is the front and then you'll have your sliding glass doors that will you know, cover these openings. This is the back of the cage and as you can see they're vented so that the airflow can get into the cage, very smart very practical and then we have this is the last piece I believe this is the top of the cage yes this is the top piece so we don't put the top piece on first we put the bottom we start with the bottom piece now I have the directions memorized already because I've already built four of these things so that, that's pretty good it's pretty impressive right okay now I also bought a few of the cages that have shelf, a shelf built into it for like carpet pythons to kind of hang on the shelf. I'll show you that after. This is just the standard cage without the shelf. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this one first. So we start, if I get out of frame, don't worry about it, you'll still hear my big mouth. So we start with the, the bottom of the cage, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to get one of the, I like to start by convention with the left. And once again, the good thing is these stickers kind of tell you which is the left side, which is the top of the cage. So I know that which direction to put these things in. And you can see, see these grooves here? These grooves are for the, uh, for the track of the, um, of the glass that is gonna slide in there. So, this goes like this, pretty simple. Right here, once again, I know the tracks are there and I know the orientation. Now all you gotta do, Get some screws. Where did I put my screws? Okay, so what, what I do is I take a handful of screws. Okay, so I take a handful of screws, I have them available to me. You want to get a screw gun, but you don't want to use a full blast, okay, because you don't want to strip these screws. Line up your, your door here. You set your screw in there. You see how I'm going nice and slow? I'm not using it on, like, full blast. That's what you want to do. Once you get that first screw in, it, you don't even need any help. So a lot of people think, well, yeah, I may need help. So someone to hold the, to hold the, um, the wood up. Now nah, you can do this yourself. If I can do it, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm, my wife would like to say I'm not a mechanically inclined guy. I am actually, I'm just lazy. I pretend that I'm not, so that I don't get asked to do a lot of stuff around the house. I just hire people to do it. It's way easier. <laughs> but we know we're, we're in quarantine times now, so the help is hard to find. So I went too fast so it didn't go in. You want it to go nice and slow and take your time on this thing here. Don't rush. If you rush, it won't work there. Okay. So once again, read the instructions. The instructions are really, they'll tell you the right order to do things in. And it's way easier if you do that. Don't try to be a hero and do yourself. Okay, so that's one side on right here. So this is the, the, the bottom, 
and a side. I'm going to put the other side on now. Same procedure. All right, so the key with this now is you want to make sure this top piece is sitting flush, okay? So you put this on, once again, actually I should say this is the back piece, I'm sorry. This back piece is pointing toward the top, so that means this is the top of the cage. The bottom of the cage is already on here. Now, the key with this is we don't want to attach it to the back yet piece. We only want to attach it to the sides, and I'll show you why after. Um, the key is keep this down and flush. So you get a nice tight fit. Otherwise, if this is sticking up this little lip, it's not going to go well. You're going to have to undo it and redo it. And, we, and you don't, the key with building things is build it once the right way. We do not want to have to redo it. So there's three screws on the side here. We're going to do these three screws. We're not going to do the back screws, which are which are way more. We'll do those later. And I'm just going to do the other side, and then we get the back piece. All right, guys, now that we have this, this back piece on, we want to put this front piece on. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently flip this around. Nice and easy. Because remember, we haven't screwed the whole thing together yet. We have some screws that still need to go in because we have to do this in the right order. Now, this is the front of the cage. So here, once again, we have our arrow saying front of cage. And we want to pop this piece in. Normally, I would put this actually in a different position, but I want you to be able to see what we're doing here. So you get this inside here and you want to, there's a groove here you're going to snap it to. They call it datto. <laughs> I'm not a builder. I'm sure that's what it's called. So I got it in my little groove here and this is exactly where it needs to go. And I can't, I'm not putting the front piece on yet. I'm going to screw the sides in. So once again, I grab my screws and my screw gun. Now this, this is important, okay, this, this piece. Because this is the piece I kind of almost messed up on. You want to make sure this thing is pushed up, not down. You want to make it pushed up into the groove and back so that when you're screwing, you screw it, it doesn't go out the side of this thing, all right? That's a key. The key is it's got to be in the groove. And once again, I, I think I might actually miss something, so I'm going to back it out a little bit. The good thing is these screws come out real easy, too, if you, if you don't do things the right way. All right. So you want to lift it up and, and push it against the bottom of the cage. I think I got it right, and I'll tell you why. I want to just make sure, because you won't be able to, if you don't put this piece in right, and it sticks out too high, you won't be able to put the top piece on, and that's not going to be good. So. We want to be able to get the top piece on. So once again, we got to put these three screws in. We're going to make sure that this thing is lifted up properly. And good. And I'm going to do the other side. And now we're going to work on the next step. All right. So now I have this, the sides, the back, okay, and the bottom all screwed on. Now we can flip this. This is how the cage looks. Now all you have to do is put the top on, okay? Now, the thing about the top is that in the direction they tell you to put the top on and then they have you take the top off so I know it sounds ridiculous so I don't put the top on at this point what they want you to do is they want you to screw this back they want you to put the top on and then screw the back piece on I don't like it I'm, I'm, I change the directions a little bit because what you have to do is you have to silicone the inside of this thing and they give you this really nice tube of silicone. Each cage comes with its own tube of silicone. You, you know, you open this up, you snip the end off, and what they want you to do is they want you to just silicone the bottom all around and then silicone up the sides so that it seals it. The reason is that if the snake pees in here, you don't want the pee to seep through. I understand. So you, you, you silicone this. What I've been doing is I've been siliconing it in this position then I put the top on, then I screw all the sides and all the others, put all the other screws in. If you do it the directions way, okay, you're gonna have to take the top off 
and then silicone it and put it back on again after you've already screwed on. Now it's not that it's not that hard. There's, there's only about maybe 12 or 15 screws you got to take out. But to me, it's redundant. I, I don't like to redo. I don't like to waste time. So I don't like to do things and then have to take it off and then do it again. But I understand why they want you to do it. So I silicone it and then I immediately put the top on and screw everything else together. Okay, you could theoretically put the top and do everything and then silicone after, but then you got to kind of reach in through this opening here and try to get the silicone. It's easier if you can do it from above and you can see everything. So I'm not going to go and, and do everything now, okay, because <clears throat> I don't want to silicone right now and it's like 2 in the morning. But I'm going to show you what, what, what the top will look like when you put it on. So here's the top. Once again, here's the, the it's this top piece. So you know how you, you're going. Make sure you get the right direction here. This fits right in the groove here. And you basically just make sure everything's lined up. And you have all your screws right here, and you just pop, 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 screw everything in, and you're done. If you have a shelf, you would put the shelf in probably before putting the top in. That's what I did. Okay, um, there's four little brackets that go inside, you screw through the back, and then you put the shelf on it. Super, super easy. This is just it. This is it. I just put the cage together for you, essentially. Minus showing you how I'm doing the silicone. Um, I let my mother-in-law do that. I'm a, I'm a slob. I, I rush too much. I know I can do it, but I'd rather have my, my mother-in-law. She's like a, 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 a superb, like, neat person, and she does everything very very well so I, I, I'd rather her do it but anyway this is it it took me what 10 minutes to assemble the cage the first cage took me a lot longer because I didn't know what I was doing I had to read the directions once you once you do one cage it's a breeze it really I, I was kind of like pissed off about the fact I had to assemble it and I realized that it's really not difficult and it takes no time at all so don't be intimidated by the process uh, I love the cages and once I have them set up I'm going to show you how I put the heat tape on and then uh, glass panes in there. That'll be another video. All right, snake fans, that's it for today. We got a clutch. You got to see me uh, assemble my animal plastics uh, cage that came in. I'm gonna show you the, the second part of that in tomorrow's video, hopefully. Look, every day you come into the snake room, it's a new adventure, and there's always something that needs to be done. I always run out of time, and it's 2.30 in the morning, and that's just what happens. So I'm ending the video now. Guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. Tell your friends about these videos, and we'll be back tomorrow morning.